Hi, I'm Aki, and I'm here to take you on a short journey down a rabbit hole that was uh, just for a project, but uh, ended up being so much more. So in the beginning, I was really interested in nine track, nine track tape drives. Um, they're, they're pretty cool, right? Big, big iron old, old machines and you, you know, you want to play with them. So my idea was to, to do a project with a nine track tape drive, right? Everyone wants to play with them. They're really fun. So the idea was to take a nine tra track tape drive, apply some magic and get it booting on my modern Threadripper machine. That seems simple enough, don't you think? So the first step was to find a nine track tape drive. The drive I ended up finding was an IBM 9348002. Uh, it's from the mid nineties. It was mainly used with IBM's mainframes and AS400 series. They are um, designed in two different models. The one I have, the 002 is uh, to be put on a desk. And there's another one that goes in a 19 inch rack. Uh, and it talks SCSI one HVD. It's also very cute. I can't, I can't underestimate how cute this drive is. It's an auto loading nine track tape drive and it is absolutely adorable. So I mentioned it talks SCSI. Well, what is SCSI? SCSI stands for the small computer system interface. Uh, it's popular in high end and enterprise things. Um, it was also pretty popular back in the day with the Macintosh. Uh, they used SCSI for their hard drives because it's much faster than IDE and you can have up to uh, nine devices or uh, eight devices on a SCSI chain. Uh, it also has many flavors. There's HVD, LVD, SE, uh, standing for high voltage differential, low voltage differential, and single ended respectively. That just dictates how the actual wires are connected. And then there's a bunch of speed grades. There's like fast 10 and ultra 320. And that just dictates um, some additional signals as well as uh, how fast the actual interface itself is. There was a lot of a uh, lot of changes. Now you may think of SCSI as something that was old in the late 90s, early 2000s and has gone out of fashion, but it's actually still everywhere. Uh, enterprise systems and uh, servers that use SAS drives. SAS is just serial attached SCSI. It's it's still uh, it's still used everywhere. Fiber channel for large storage arrays over fiber optic cables. That's just a wrapper around SCSI. And then USB mesh storage too, like your thumb drives and your uh, portable hard drives. Those all use SCSI uh, as the underlying medium for uh, data transfer. So. The problem is, I mentioned the drive talks SCSI 1 HVD. Well, SCSI 1 is very old and HVD is very uncommon. It's, it's a terrible combination for uh, modern things. And there's no information easily accessible on SCSI 1. Um, because SCSI is uh, a standard, uh, you normally have to buy them from standards organizations. And said standards organization would be the T10. Well, technically, they're the technical committee. Ah, try saying that three times fast. Um, if it talks or deals with SCSI, and that's um, SCSI over PCI Express or Fiber Channel or SAS, uh, then it has gone through the hands of T10. They are the technical committee behind it. Uh, there used to be X3T9.2, which is an even better mouthful than T10. Um, you also, in order to get access to these standards, though, you need to be a member. Um, the problem is it's like two thousand plus dollars a year to become a uh, non a voting member of the t10 technical committee and that's a little expensive um and also they only have drafts of the very first scuzzy specification and those drafts are incomplete as far as i have found when it comes to implementation details so i look a level up i look at incits now they are the parent to the t10 technical committee technical committee. They're more of what you think of when you think of a tr traditional standards organization um, like ANSI or ISO. Uh, they do have very helpful staff. I was on the phone for about half an hour with one of the, the, the staff members there trying to find a physical or digital full copy of the SCSI 1 standard. And unfortunately, they were not able to help me, but they were very kind. 
Uh, but spending some time on Google, uh, you can find it. So you can find it as the ANSI standard, uh, ANSI X3131-1986, or as the ECMA standard, uh, ECMA111. They are not technically the same. Um, the ECMA standard doesn't have the part of the ANSI standard where it specifies the actual physical connector. And that's important. <laughs> Um, that also means that the Wikipedia article on Parallel SCSI is wrong because it mentions that there was never a connector specified or standardized where there was in the ANSI standard. But because the ECMA standard is freely available, um, that was the one that was cited. So while it technically wasn't standardized in ECMA, it was standardized in ANSI. It, it's a whole complicated thing. But I wanted to go with the ANSI standard because that's what the IBM drive would have been using. And to talk to SCSI, because nothing existed, I have to come up with something. So I like to introduce you to Squishy. It was a placeholder name, but it stuck. Um, it's dedicated SCSI 1 HVD to USB hardware. It's 100% open source hardware and software. All of the schematics, the designs, the code, everything's open source. And it has over 800 hours of CatGuard engineering going into it and counting. And this is only revision 1. There are some challenges, though. Um, for full SCSI 1 HVD support, because it's old and strange, there aren't any existing interface solutions. Um, so I had to build my own out of completely discrete components. In addition, the only device I have to test it on, because again, it wasn't very common, is my irreplaceable, <laughs> um, irreplaceable 9-track drive. So it's, it's a little bit of a yikesy situation. But here we are, Rev1 of the hardware, it's got a purple PCB, it's cute, you can see the uh, normal Centronics connector on the left, it's big and chunky. Squishy itself is fairly small, um, it just needed a USB and an FPGA and some stuff, and you can see all of the chips in the line up there, that was uh, what I had to do to design the uh, SCSI1 high voltage uh, differential interface out of discrete components. Uh, it took a bit of time, but and a few revisions, but it's there. But once I got this far, suddenly scope creep happened, as any good project knows. <laughs> but now it's a toolkit. So uh, the SCSI multi-tool, or Squishy has turned into a SCSI multi-tool. I'm hoping to support all flavors of SCSI soon. Uh, it's a complete hardware, gateware, and software library, predominantly written in Python. And it ideally will be able to be the go-to toolkit for everything SCSI. Now, you may have seen before that there was a little cute fox uh, sitting on the tape drive. Who is that very cute fox? Well, she's Sachi. So I got in contact with Tyson Tan, who did the um, mascot for Krita. And well, here we are. We have Sachi, uh, designed and illustrated by Tyson Tan, and she's the most adorable little fox you'll ever see. And so scope creep continued to happen. <laughs> so now there's two of them. I now have an addiction to these. Um, unfortunately, this one's a Pertech interface, though. So it's not, uh, not for this story, but soon. But in the end, going down the scuzzy rabbit hole, Oops, I turned into a SCSI witch. Uh, I have acquired much more cursed information than I would have liked, uh, but I'm embracing it and continuing on with this project, and hopefully I get something that everybody can enjoy. But in the end, we'll see what happens. I'd like to extend a thanks to all of the Bang Bang Con staff and people who have bought tickets and are here. I would also like to extend Thanks to the INCITS employee who's on the phone for 30 minutes. You can find Squishy at uh, on GitHub at lethalbit slash Squishy. And you can find my uh, socials on Twitter and Mastodon. Lethalbit for Twitter and lethalbitchaos.social for Mastodon. Anyway, thank you very much. And uh, I'll be around in the Discord if anyone has any questions.